In this video, we're going to look at how to balance redox equations using the half reaction method in acidic solution. Ready? Let's do it. Here's the equation that we're going to balance. Now, balancing a redox equation is a little bit more challenging than just balancing a regular chemical equation. Because with a redox equation, we have to balance not only the individual atoms, but also the charges. So, there's a step-by-step -step method we use that guides us through the process, kind of to make sure we don't forget anything along the way. I'm not going to talk about all the steps of this process right now. Instead, I'm going to introduce them one by one as we use them while we work through balancing this example. So, here's where we start. This is a redox equation, which means that there's oxidation and reduction going on. We want to know which elements are getting oxidized and which are getting reduced. We can figure this out by looking at changes in the oxidation numbers for these elements. So the first thing we're going to do is assign oxidation numbers to each of the atoms in this equation. So our first step is to determine oxidation numbers. These are the rules that we're going to use to figure out the oxidation numbers for the elements in this equation. Now if this stuff is totally new to you, I have a couple videos on just determining oxidation numbers. You might want to check that out for some background. Anyway, let's start with Ag, silver here. Silver is an element by itself. It's not combined with any other elements, it's just on its own. And so that means that its oxidation number is zero. NO3 one minus here is a polyatomic ion. For N, for nitrogen, there's not a specific rule, so we'll have to figure it out. Oxygen is usually minus two, except minus one in peroxide. This definitely isn't peroxide here. So its oxidation number is minus two. Now in this compound, there are three oxygens, O3. So I'm gonna multiply this negative two, this minus two times three to get minus six, which is the total number, the total oxidation number for oxygen in this compound. Now, to figure out nitrogen's oxidation number, we're gonna use this rule here, that the sum of oxidation numbers for a polyatomic ion equals the ion charge. The ion charge here is one minus, and that means that whatever nitrogen's oxidation number is, when added with minus six, has to give us minus one. So that means that nitrogen's oxidation number is plus five, plus five minus six equals minus one. So there we have it. Now, let's look at oxidation numbers on this side of the equation. They're not necessarily the same as they were over here because oxidation numbers can change when the element is in different circumstances. So here, Ag now has a charge of plus one. It's become an ion. It's become a monatomic ion made of just one atom. So its oxidation number is the same as its ion charge. So it's gonna be plus one. And then over here, we don't know nitrogen's oxidation number, but we do know that oxygen's is going to be minus two. Then there's this rule here that for a neutral compound, the oxidation numbers have to add to zero. NO is definitely a neutral compound because there's not a charge after it, which means that to add together with minus two, you get zero, nitrogen has to have an oxidation number of plus two. Plus two minus two equals zero. So these are the oxidation numbers for the elements in this equation. Now that we've determined these oxidation numbers, we can figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Take a look at this chart here. Reduction is a gain of electrons and it causes the oxidation number to go down. Oxidation is a loss of electrons and it causes the oxidation number to go up. Okay, silver here starts out as zero on this side of the equation, and then over here it becomes plus one. So its oxidation number is going up, which means that it is being oxidized from zero to plus one. Nitrogen here is plus five over here, but then is plus two on this other side of the equation. So its oxidation number is going down, which means that nitrogen is being reduced. Now just let's take a look at oxygen real quick. Oxygen is minus two here, 
and it's minus 2 on this side, so nothing is happening to oxygen. In this equation, silver is being oxidized and nitrogen is being reduced. Now we're going to write half reactions for the oxidation and for the reduction separately. We'll start with the oxidation here. Silver, as we said, is getting oxidized. So we have Ag on one side of the equation, and then we have Ag1 plus on the other side of the equation. This is the oxidation half reaction. And now the reduction half reaction is going to be NO3 1 minus, NO3 1 minus, and then on the other side of the equation we're going to have NO. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to balance each one of these equations separately. I'll start with the equation for reduction and then we'll balance the equation for oxidation. Here's a reduction half reaction. We're going to start by balancing the atoms other than O and H. Here's what that means. We have two elements in this equation. We have nitrogen and oxygen on both sides right here. On this side of the equation we have one nitrogen and we have three oxygens, O3, and on this side of the equation we have one nitrogen and one oxygen. So the nitrogen is balanced, one on both sides, so we're ready to move on. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to use H2O to balance oxygen and H plus to balance H. Here's what that means. We have an imbalance right now of oxygen. We have more oxygens on this side than on this side. In order for this to balance, we're going to add H2O, which provides oxygen. There is one oxygen atom in each H2O molecule, and I have three oxygen on this side, one on this side, so I need two more oxygens, so I'm going to put a two in front of this. So now I have one plus two oxygens, which gives me three oxygens. Now the oxygens balance by adding water. But I've introduced another element into the chemical equation because now I have hydrogen. And on this side I now have two times two, four hydrogens, and right now I don't have any hydrogens on this side. So in order to balance out the hydrogens I added by introducing water, I'm going to add H plus to this other side. I've got four hydrogens on this side, so I'm going to add four H plus to this side. So now I have four hydrogens on both sides of the equation. Now my nitrogens, oxygens, and hydrogens are all balanced. Now that I've balanced the atoms in this equation, I now have to balance the charges by adding electrons. The concept of balancing charges in an equation might, might be new to you, so let me walk you through this. The first thing I've got to do is determine how much charge I have on each side of the equation. I'll start over here. I have 4H+. Each one of these H+, have a charge of plus 1, so 4 of those are going to give me plus 4. Then I have 1NO3, 1 minus, with a minus 1 charge. So the total charge here I have is plus 4 from the hydrogens, minus 1 from the NO3, 1 minus, gives me plus 3. Now over here on this side of the equation I don't have anything that's charged, so the total charge here is going to be 0. That's simple enough. So now I've got to get these to balance. I need it to be the same charge number on both sides. I need to find a way to cancel out this plus 3 of charge, and I'm going to do that by adding electrons, because electrons have a negative charge. So to this side of the equation, I'm going to add 3 e minus, the symbol for electron, 3 electrons, each of which have a charge of 1 minus. So I'm going to have plus 3 minus 3, the charge from these electrons here, and that's going to give me a charge of 0. So now I've got zero on both sides of the equation and the charges balance. So the equation for reduction, or I should say the half reaction for reduction, is now balanced for atoms and for charge. Now I have to do the same balancing routine with the half reaction for oxidation. Here's a half reaction for oxidation. We have to balance the atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. But we don't have to worry about that because we have one silver atom on this side and one silver atom on this side, so it's already balanced. We also 
don't have to worry about adding water or H plus to balance out the O or H because there are none of them in this equation. The only thing that we have to keep in mind is the balance of the charges. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to determine the charge on both sides of the equation. Over here, we just have AG with no charge, so the charge is zero. Over here, we have AG1+, plus, so the charge is plus one. I need these charges to balance, so to cancel out this plus one charge, I'm going to add one electron with a one minus charge to this side, so now I've got plus one minus one equals zero, 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 the charge is balanced. Now that I've balanced this, I'm ready to combine it with a half reaction for reduction. Now that I've balanced these two equations for both atoms and charge, I'm going to start putting them back together. Let's look at the electrons here. There are three electrons down here in the reduction half reaction, and there is one electron here in the oxidation half reaction. What I want to do is multiply the half reactions to make the number of electrons equal in both. Since there are three electrons down here and one electron up here, I can multiply this whole equation by three to end up with three electrons so they'll be the same. So I'm going to do that just as if it's a math equation and I'm going to distribute this three across the whole reaction. So that's going to give me 3 Ag on that side, and then 3 Ag plus plus 3 E minus. Now the number of electrons balances in the reduction and oxidation reactions. Now that the number of electrons is the same in both reactions, I can add them together. Let me show you how I do that. We'll start with everything on this side of the arrow. Okay, I'll start with my 3Ag, 3Ag, and now I put in everything from this reaction on this side of the arrow, 3Ag plus 3E minus plus 4H plus plus NO3 1 minus. Then I put the arrow in, and then I'll put in everything on this side. I will have 3 Ag plus plus 3e minus plus this NO plus 2H2O. And now the step up here says that we will be canceling out stuff that appears on both sides of the arrow. Let's look, we have three electrons on both sides of the arrow, so this can be canceled out and this can be canceled out. And when we rewrite this after canceling out those electrons, this is going to be our final equation. Lastly, we'll do a final check to make sure everything balances here, the atoms and the charges. We'll start with the atoms. Okay, left side, Ag, silver, we got three of them. Hydrogens, four. Nitrogens, just one. And oxygen, O3, we got three. Over on the right side, silver Ag, we got three. Hydrogen, we have two times two, gives us four. Nitrogen, one. And oxygen, we have one there, plus uh, two over here, gives us three. So, silvers, hydrogens, nitrogens, and oxygens all balance. This is good for atoms. Now let's check the charges, okay. Charges on the left side here. We have 4H plus. So that's going to be a total of plus 4 charge. And then NO3 1 minus, would be minus 1. It's going to give us plus 3, plus 4 minus 1. That's for the left side. Now for the right side, the only thing that's charged is silver here, Ag1 plus, and we have three of those. So the total charge for this is going to be plus three for those three silvers. So plus three here, plus three here, the charges are balanced too, this equation is perfect, we're good to go. All right, so that is how you balance a redox equation using the half reaction method in acidic solution. Here's a list of the steps that we use to do the balancing. Now you might want to review these, but I don't think it's a good use of your time to memorize them. Instead, I'd recommend you try solving a variety of sample problems 
So you can really get comfortable with the process and it will just become second nature.